Thank you. It's been a plenty of information uh, already, and I think I'm, I'm going to speak about um, pretty much the same things, some of the same things, but maybe a bit different words. But this is about the, the community perspective, how, be, how we've been um, involved in the Dublin Declaration monitoring during the years, as one example. So here, as you see, uh, in Finland, we have um, plenty of space for 5.5 million people living in this country. We have very low prevalence um, HIV uh, country. Uh, there have been uh, 4,730 HIV cases by end of 2022. Uh, yearly, we have 150 to 170 new HIV cases. And of course, some of these cases are people who are moving to Finland uh, who already know that their HIV status when they are coming into Finland. And of course, uh, last year and, and also this year will be more cases uh, because of the, the war in Ukraine. Um, we are land of thousand lakes, actually 180,000 lakes, but also in this country, we have over 100,000 uh, different kind of associations. So in, in Finland, there is a long history. We are working and acting as and volunteering in associations and non-governmental organizations, as well as uh, I think also the cooperation between NGOs and authorities. Uh, positive is at HIV Finland. We are the only patient organization for people living with HIV in Finland. Uh, founded in 1989, uh, the organization is led by people living with HIV. So we are a community-led organization. Uh, at least half of the board must uh, always be uh, persons living with HIV. Our main activities are advocacy work, uh, support, counseling, and peer support. We also do prevention campaigns and HIV testing. And one, one part, part of our work is also um, to, to provide um, information on chemsex, for example. Um, all activities are for all people living with HIV in, and their close ones uh, in Finland, also Finnish people living uh, abroad. And, and all our services are anonymous and, and free of charge. And of course, the HIV testing prevention campaigns are targeting a larger audience. Uh, the cooperation with authorities. I'm just now using, I, I'm not sure if the authorities is the correct word, but um, I'm using, using the word authorities here. Um, so there's been, uh, since uh, the epi beginning of the, the HIV epidemic, um, I think it's, it's um, there really has been the understanding why it is essential to, to include NGOs and persons infected and or affected with HIV in the decision making, planning and providing services. Uh, NGOs and the community have close con connections with local communities and marginalized groups. And I've heard uh, many times said in Finland that, that uh, without good cooperation, uh, between the communities, NGOs and authorities, we wouldn't have so low prevalence in Finland. So there really has been the cooperation since the beginning. Uh, most of the times so we've been on the same side and agreeing with the authorities uh, who are responsible for social and health care services or um, on the social and health side. Uh, saying this, that we are not, we haven't always been agreeing with the authorities on, on law and enforcement, for example. Uh, the national HIV response is defined in, in national HIV strategy. The last one is from uh, 2018 to 20, 2020. Uh, the, the strategy was drawn up for a three-year period. Uh, in the National HIV and Hepatitis Expert Group, led by the Institute of Health and Welfare, uh, DHL. Um, the expert group consists of several authorities. Uh, there are NGOs and also persons living with HIV. And now we are in a process uh, to write a new strategy. There's been the gap for the, the obvious reasons that there was the COVID pandemic taking all, all resources for a couple of years. Um, how a uh, few, few points from the strategy. 
the goal of HIV work in Finland is to reduce new HIV infections and the morbidity and mortality caused by the infection and to minimize the effects of HIV on the infected, their close ones and society. In addition, the work is guided by the 1990 goal set by the UN HIV AIDS organizations to curb the HIV epidemic. But also the strategy emphasizes the cooperation of different actors and the right of those who belong to key population groups to be involved in influencing matters that affect them uh, by participating in the planning, implementation and evaluation of activities. Uh, the, the, who is responsible also for the HIV strategy. There is the National HIV and uh, Hepatitis Expert Group, which is also a good example of, of cooperation. So some of on the left side, there are some of the authorities and on the right side, the NGOs that are in this expert group. Not authorities, there is the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, DHL. Uh, it, the, the, the whole group is chaired by the director of the Department of Health uh, Security. Uh, there are many uh, participants also from the, the DHL and as well as the, the ministries. But Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, uh, we have HIV doctors, uh, infectious diseases clinic, um, venereal diseases outpatient clinic uh, who are treating the STIs. There are the doctors treating hepatitis and uh, sometimes other ministries um, and, and law and enforcement have been there as well. Uh, from the NGO side, there is um, us, Positives at HIV Finland, and, and for this uh, group, uh, for the period three or four years, um, I'm the vice chair of the group. Uh, we have other NGOs, there is HIV Point, uh, which is uh, working with sex workers, a clinic foundation, the Kidney and Liver Association, HIV AIDS Nurses Association, and, and some other other NGOs as well. So it's quite quite big, big group and, and, and giving, I think it's a good example of, of cooperation. Uh, and within this group, we also, besides the HIV strategy, uh, we've been writing um, the guidance for, um, and the papers for PrEP and guidance for HIV testing, for example. Besides the expert group, we have national HIV network uh, and the network uh, meets three to four times a year. Uh, that's uh, chaired by Positiviset. Um, and in this group, we are sharing more practical things and, and it's more informative than the expert group, also much more interesting <laughs> than, than the expert group. But we are, for example, sharing very grassroots uh, information, for example, what, what illegal drugs are on the market at the moment, um, how easy it is to get tested for STIs. At, uh, yeah. Uh, how many new in, uh, HIV positive diagnoses there have been during the past months, and if everyone are linked to care. Uh, the participants in this, this network, there are, are from uh, other NGOs. There is the DHL uh, hospital, the nurses from the hospital, um, ministries and service providers from the city of Helsinki, and one uh, mainly the, the who was uh, providing services to, to drug users. Uh, but within this group, we started to give the response to Dublin uh, Declaration Monitoring, the, the community report. And before Positive said it was Helsinki Diaconess Institute that was chairing the network for many years. And I think that the, the first time, uh, the first responses, they took quite many hours when we were uh, actually discussing with, with different NGOs uh, what, we, what we're thinking if we are really agreeing with authorities. Um, on, on the responses. Uh, the Dublin Declaration Monitoring, uh, we've been, I think we've been participating uh, every time in Finland, the community and NGOs. So um, the DHL, um, who is responsible for the, the country response, they ask us to coordinate the community response. And we, then we invite other NGOs to participate. Uh, we organize a meeting where we go through the questionnaire. And then after that, uh, we have a meeting with DHL to discuss um, through the questions and, and responses if, if we are agreeing uh, or not. And then trying to, if we are disagreeing, then we are trying to, to compromise and find a solution that, that we are agreeing and that we are understanding the questions the same way. 
Um, and I think in Finland, we've been mainly agreeing with authorities in, in our responses. And I think that the questions, they are not that provoking and, and, and for a debate anymore as, as they were uh, before. There have been quite um, uh, same same questions for some years. And um, I think we have kept our answers pretty much the same. There hasn't been happening that much. Sometimes I, I personally, I wish there was the same enthusiasm to measure quality of life, discrimination and stigmatization as there is for viral loads and CD4 counts. Um, I, I really appreciate that uh, ECDC and Aid Section Europe and EADG have been conducting the, the community stigma survey. And I think it, it really provides us data, but also it draws attention to stigma. And, and for many countries um, in EU, I think it's important that ECDC is also really talking about stigma and, and uh, conducting the surveys. And, and what gets measure, measured gets done. So maybe we really see more, more surveys on stigma also in the future. Um, the funding for NGOs um, in, in Finland, I think it was mentioned um, in, mentioned in, in the, the previous presentation as well. Um, uh, NGOs get the funding from a Center for Social Welfare and Health Organizations. And this body is not involved in any, any decision making or any of the HIV programs, for example. There is some small um, funding like 500,000 euros uh, from Ministry for Social and Health for prevention uh, for sexually transmitted and bloodborne diseases, which is quite, quite minimal. And then other ministries give grants for culture, education and sport activities. And as well then the well-being services counties and city of Helsinki are funding services for people living in certain areas. But I think this is kind of, and an also um, some of the points I think Cedric said um, made me think how this creates, um, it, it's good that we can kind of criticize the authorities and they are not <laughs> behind, um, um, or they are not making decisions um, on the funding for, for uh, social and health organizations. But at the same time, it's totally different body. And then, um, they are not aware of the most important things or what we should actually be doing in Finland uh, to reach, for example, the 95, 95, 95 calls uh, or um, the 10, 10, 10 um, targets. Um, some other examples um, that of the cooperation and collaboration in Finland that we have with, with authorities. Um, We've been uh, building up the national quality registers in Finland uh, for, I think it started with 10 or 12 different uh, diseases or, or conditions. Uh, one was HIV. Uh, we have been participating in the work uh, and are still participating uh, the, the core group for HIV reg register. And, and within this group, we also involved um, creating the patient related, related outcome measures. Uh, we get support to steering groups if, if there are um, some um, projects that we need a steering group. We can get that the authorities to participate the steering groups. We also um, have them. It's e easy to get speakers to our seminars. Uh, the NGOs are invited and the community groups are invited to working groups, uh, parliamentary hearings. And there are always a possibility to submit comments, for example, the statute uh, drafting in the, the ministries. But also that the cooperation is two way. And, and I think uh, that we as NGOs and, and community led organizations, we need to demonstrate our expertise and, and show our representativeness. Uh, in Finland, uh, someone just, uh, I think it, um, that person was, was from uh, Ministry of Social and Health asking that, do we have a, a meaningful seat in the table? And um, at the moment, I would say, yes, uh, we have a, a meaningful seat in the table in Finland. Uh, but, but I think that also to, to keep the seat in the table in the future, it means uh, constant work and that that work has to be funded. But also in, in communities and community-led organizations, we need to have a vision 
for the future, how how it looks like, and and kind of work and act on that. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>